Hello everyone, welcome to the part 2 of domain 2. This video is focused on data classification, retention, deletion and archive, IRM, data privacy related to PHI, PII and the data events related to SIEM. Please subscribe to the channel if not yet done. Data classification, it is more focused on um, how to classify the data, what are the parameters, uh, what all things we need to take care of while we need to classify any data, any information um, during the creation or during the modification or even at the later stage. We discussed in the previous domains about the BIA. This is the important uh, uh, aspect when we uh, classify any information here because uh, the business impact um, analysis it is important anywhere to classify any data um, this is to categorize any data based on its value and derives the uh, the controls accordingly uh, to to apply on any any information there are different aspects here one is the sensitivity jurisdiction and uh, the uh, criticality of that information in the sensitive sensitivity we do check whether this uh, classification model um, is is more focused on uh, the sensitivity of of that data for example uh, what what could be the negative impact if any unauthorized disclosure uh, would happen so uh, that helps us to uh, decide on the sensitivity and uh, for example in in the u.s military or in, in any other area in government and in the private organization the sensitivity is defined in different way uh, jurisdiction it is uh, based on the geographical location of um, of the source or the storage point of that data um, for example we have um, pii that is personally identifiable information and if if the data gathered from the citizen of the European Union that is subject to the European Union uh, privacy laws, uh, if if that is the case, then we need to uh, accordingly apply the security controls, and we need to accordingly classify that data so that we can we can put in we can um, you know um, accordingly uh, put in place the security controls there. Another one is the criticality of that data. It is um, more from uh, the organization survival's um, you know aspect. For example, if there is any information which could be um, disclosed, then uh, what will be the uh, what will be the survival uh, organization survival cases uh, if that is disclosed, and based on that we define uh, the security control and we define the uh, classification of that information there are other aspects like uh, you know security controls uh, we, we choose administrative controls we choose preventive controls and then accordingly compensating controls compensating is something that uh, when we for example we cannot implement uh, one uh, security control uh, for any technical reason or maybe for the cost purpose then we may have another one to replace uh, the the first one that is that is the uh, compensating uh, control uh, another one is the data must be classified during the create so that the proper security controls are applied make uh, metadata available to help determining the classification of that information protect data according to its classification at rest and uh, in transit as well uh, there is another aspect of the data reclassification for example some data maybe uh, it is um, well, let's say uh, it is private to the organization but after one year it may be uh, you know uh, confidential then accordingly we need to change the security control we need to increase the security of, of that uh, information there data classification having different um, other aspects as well like mapping and labeling of of that information in mapping um, it is it is it is um, it is basically um, uses the uh, metadata which is data about data to map the data to uh, to the security controls for example here in this example like um, the 
the metadata includes in the file name or uh, in the file header or the column heading in the spreadsheet for example here the credit card dot um, txt this can alert you up, uh, to apply the proper controls but when we name the file like 123.txt, it may not alert us to apply more controls there. Labelings, uh, this is the external tagging data with the additional information. For example, any data which is, um, uh, which is, um, uh, which might be, uh, you know, belongs to a particular department, it may be a particular location, uh, the date of creation, date of schedule, destruction, and the dispo disp uh, disposal, confidentiality level, um, access limitations, you know, the source jurisdictions, etc. So, uh, on, on that basis, we define the labels for that uh, particular information. In this, um, in this case, the sensitivity of that information, for example, we have uh, uh, the PHI, we have PII, and uh, the cardholder data. For example, the PHI, it is, it is more um, um, related to the health information because um, this health information um, is related to the past, present, or the future health status of any individual that was created. Um, or maybe used or maybe obtained in in the course of providing the healthcare services including the payment of those services even the phi can uh, can include um, things like diagnosis treatment information test results um, and the prescription information as well as the other pii such as gender uh, uh, birth date and so on in us like phi is governed by uh, hipaa so that also need to be uh, taken care um, while we are, um, you know, classifying that information based on the sensitivity. And uh, if it is if, if if it needs to be, um, uh, com you know, uh, in compliance with the HIPAA, then we need to accordingly classify that information so that we can um, apply controls which are complying HIPAA uh, regulation here. Next is PII. Um, any data that could potentially be used to identify a particular in individual from uh, any uh, any other individual um, your full name your social security number your passport number or your email address are the uh, examples of the data elements that are unique to you and only you that's pii some data can be sensitive and some non-sensitive. For example, the personal uh, information like name, mobile numbers, these are publicly available and can be considered as non-sensitive, though these are personal. While the information like uh, social security number, uh, passport number, these are sensitive because these are not publicly available. Uh, while the names um, and the mobile number, the, these can be uh, categorized as the direct identify, uh, identifier of your PII here. Then we have the cardholder data. It is a specific subset of the PII um, that is related to the holder of the credit card or the debit card this card this data includes the information such as the primary account number pan number social security codes um, expiry date and any other information that can be used to identify a particular individual card holder uh, the card holder data is governed by pci dss um, while um, the pii there uh, we have different regulations and different you know uh, it depends on country to country for example for european union there is uh, gdpr um, and uh, similarly different states and different countries are using the different regulate uh, regulations here the common privacy terms um, remember from the exam point of view these terminologies that who is the data subject the sub the the person or the any actor who can be identified directly or indirectly whose data actually is being collected that is the data subject um, the personal data it could be pii phi personal payroll uh, data your 
um, your IP address or you know there are several different uh, data elements which are uh, falling in the category of the personal data processing any uh, operation on the data it could be modification it could be you know um, usage uh, collection processing that is uh, you know uh, that is categorized as processing controller it is the main entity who is who is collecting that data and um, and you know the uh, this 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 uh, you know primarily can be uh, considered as data owner because they are the one who collect the data and who knows what kind of data it is what kind of compliance with they need to comply with and accordingly they need to define some policies to protect that data um, and, and then the processor is the one uh, who processes the data on behalf of the controller for example your pay, pay, your payroll is being processed by any outsource company any third party who is actually uh, processing the payroll for uh, for your employees um, at the same time uh, the owner uh, data owner versus um, custodian so uh, the owner define always defines uh, the security policies and they need to uh, comply with the different regulations while the custodian need to implement those uh, security policies they need to apply the controls they need to for example take backup they need to uh, check for the restoration for for that data so um, so this is how oh, we can differentiate uh, both IRM uh, important aspect here um, in terms of the IRM this adds the extra layer of the access control on top of the data object or the document and provides a granular you know flow um, for uh, performing certain task on on a particular data ACLs are embedded into the file uh, you do not need to maintain them centrally and uh, that is the that is the uh, added uh, functionality on uh, using the IRM that the ACLs the access control list is embedded into uh, the files itself IRM uh, will travel with the file as we said here um, in in this um, bullet point that the ACLs are embedded into the file um, the IRM so if it is if it is embedded into the file this will of course travel with that file um, useful for protecting the sensitive uh, organization content and uh, IP rights but why IRM is is important why it is required basically the IRM uh, the information rights management um, works by combining the data encryption technology with the um, with the granular identity and authorization uh, management so that is the uh, unique part of uh, the IRM uh, remember from exam point of view that why IRM so what it is basically data encryption plus the identity and authorization management so this this goes hand in hand also IRM is an important security technology in the cloud environment because it allows you to control and manage the access to the data even um, it moves across the various locations um, it is still provides you the data encryption plus uh, the identity and authorization uh, management on that data the IRM has some objectives and uh, some tools to um, to protect your data. Uh, here, uh, some objectives, for example, supports the classification, access through the um, access control list. Um, the data owner and, uh, and the administrators will have granular control on that data. And then RBAC, role-based access control. Uh, these are the IRM objectives. Appropriate tools like continuous protection what it means is that the IRM ensures that any data uh, being managed by the IRM implementation is protected all the time all the time when we say all the time means regardless of its location or its data lifecycle phase it could be at rest in transit or in use 
it ensures to protect the data continuously then we have automatic uh, expiration here this allows an organization to set policies that automatically revoke access to the data after the uh, predetermined lifetime dynamic controls um, this allows the organizations to manage the access permission even uh, once data has been distributed dynamic control means that the data owner have the same granular level of controls over the irm data even once it has been uh, downloaded shared or moved to the different uh, you know uh, remote storage auditability irm technology that provides a continuous audit trail uh, wherever the data whosoever is accessing it it ensures that the audit trail is all the time available um, and uh, it is um, you know has access to um uh, those uh, those trails also the organizations using irm tool are able to monitor uh, which user have access to the data and track when they use that access auditability uh, helps also to ensure the data access is in line with the organization policies as well as um, with legal and regulatory requirements integration and support uh, the IRM tool maintains the comparability with most office suites and email filtering technology, allowing the granular control over not just the documents and the file, but also email that moves through the organization. Data retention, deletion and archiving policies. Uh, in terms of the data retention, it establishes the protocol for keeping the information for operational or for regulatory uh, compliance needs. For example, um, um, there are different needs like for income tax, for forensic, for privacy uh, regulations or the different regulations where um, the, uh, the organizations will need to um, uh, retain the data for five years for seven years for 10 years for example and the organizations will need to comply with that um, different aspects here um, the data retention period and then data format for example um, uh, for data retention it has to be stored in a particular format it cannot be in the in, in the unstructured form it has to be uh, maintained in the particular format data security so we need to uh, secure it um, so that there is no tampering uh, happening if, if the data is retained for uh, for the forensic purposes uh, it is important to secure that data retrieval procedures for the enterprises then we have uh, data deletion so safe disposal of the data uh, that is needed to ensure that there is no data remnants and the cloud is is where we may have the data remnants because we do not have an option for physical destruction and the degaussing so customer uh, cannot access these uh, two things for uh, for destroying or for deleting that particular information because they do not have the physical access to the infrastructure they cannot degauss the drives because they do not they cannot access those uh, those drives physically only option left are uh, overwriting and the crypto shredding so in overwriting we have data stored on a on a particular uh, bucket or or the different uh, you know storage media in the cloud then um, we may define um, uh, the the policies to to overwrite uh, the data in order to uh, to dispose of uh, that particular data while in the crypto shredding, so depending on uh, the the severity or the sensitivity of that information, if the data is confidential, that it becomes um, important to uh, to cryptographically shed that uh, shred that data, and it is the most effective method of the data deletion. So remember, from exam point of view, very important. If you have uh, you know uh, this higher sensitivity of the data, then it is the best option to to delete uh, the data. Data archiving. Um, we have format archiving data should be done in the right format to ensure uh, you know the storage management is properly done. Then we have business continuity and disaster recovery. This should align um, if you are archiving the data. This should align with the organization uh, BCDR policies. 
monitoring and testing the same data should be monitored throughout um, all the stages of its life cycle that is very important and uh, as part of the cloud data life cycle the archive data should be logged to uh, make sure that it can be properly protected and monitored uh, until the restored or the deleted um, that data then we have data protection um, this is for the data that is archived in um, long-term storage should be analyzed and classified to understand its data protection needs um, here the encryption is very common mechanism uh, you know used to protect the archived data and the organization must carefully manage the encryption keys for the archive for example if you are protecting the data but if you are not managing the keys and uh, if the keys are compromised then um, it's of no use restoration a step should be taken to uh, to plan for the eventual restoration of the archived data and these steps should be periodically tested to ensure that they remain effective as the technical and the organizational uh, changes then we have the legal hold so what is the purpose of the legal hold it is a process of preserving any data that is and will or may be relevant during a um, uh, legal investigation um, once a party reasonably anticipates the litigation it must suspend its routine documentation retention or the destruction policy and put in place the legal hold to ensure the preservation uh, of the relevant documents for example you may have uh, the deletion policy the organization deletion policy but if a particular uh, uh, information is uh, is on legal hold then uh, the, the the deletion policy on that particular information is actually um, is is suspended so just just uh, keep that in mind from the exam point of view and remember that uh, on legal hold data uh, you cannot apply the um, uh, the data deletion policies or or any other different roles and responsibilities so we have um, different uh, uh, cloud services and uh, you know where uh, we have different securities like physical security it is for the data center right and the data center is actually uh, in the in the control of the uh, cloud service provider right if a particular uh, customer is in the sas uh, in the ias infrastructure as a service and the infrastructure security then it will be the shared responsibility similarly if the customer is using a pass model then uh, the platform security becomes the shared responsibility and also for software as a service uh, the application security becomes the uh, the common um, or the shared responsibility of, of both so um, um, for example in uh, in in sas model the customer has the lowest responsibility in terms of the security only the uh, grc and uh, and the data security is the responsibility uh, of the customer while the customer if they are using the platform as a service then it becomes the customer's responsibility to implement the grc uh, apply data security and apply application security while if the customer is using IAS platform, then um, in addition to pass, the platform security also becomes the customer's responsibility here. So remember from exam point of view and uh, in next few slides, we will be uh, you know, using uh, the responsibility term. So remember uh, from, from that perspective auditability traceability and accountability of the data event so when we talk about the data events it means the um, the siem when we say siem uh, it means the the security event uh, sec the security event you know um, which are being collected and correlated and uh, uh, basically the, the logs which are being collected from the different services 
and uh, these are being aggregated and uh, correlated and then uh, being used for the different purposes uh, so to understand what level of auditability traceability and accountability you have as um, a SaaS customer you should pay close attention to uh, to the terms which are being used in the SLAs and uh, the cloud contract um, uh, and review them properly. So for SaaS events, the, the cloud provider is responsible for the entire, um, entire infrastructure as well as the application itself. Remember the document, uh, document the access to the log data in the contractual agreement with CSP. It is very important. Um, the the different um, from auditability, traceability, and accountability. There are different logs which should be collected uh, in SaaS model, like admin logs, user account access logs, application logs, web server logs, DB logs, and then billing logs. While in the past uh, past uh, service model, uh, we have some events like input output, uh, input validation failure, authentication success or failure authorization failure session management and high risk functions uh, for example the password uh, or any other which are at the high risk like, like uh, in the payments so uh, these these the, these uh, are the areas for which uh, the audit logs uh, should be collected um, in, in the past model customer has uh, some more control uh, more than SAS at least uh, and CSP exposes some infrastructure levels so event source and diagnostic information while in the IAAS infrastructure as a service um, the customer should monitor recommended events in addition to the SAS and pass so it, it becomes a superset so in IAAS it, it, of course the SAS plus pass um, all these events should be monitored here in addition to uh, the network logs um, um, hypervisor logs DNS server logs management control console logs and the other logs which are very important uh, for for monitoring purpose um, identity attribution so when we collect the logs um, from the cloud uh, it is it is very important to consider who uh, was involved who was accessing that services what was the service and where from where it was accessed and when it was accessed for example um, you know um, the who uh, means it could be machine it could be um, any you know any person if it is machine then device name ip address etc should be um, traced back and should be logged in the in the logging in the events Identify user identity. Um, you need to uh, take care of the username and the user ID uh, while uh, logging the events. What was the event, type of event, severity of the event, whether it was an error, failure, information, debug, or any warning, and the description of that event. Where the geolocation, service name, protocol, or the port number of that particular service. Uh, application address, host name, or URL, uh, code location. For example, uh, it was the particular library which was throwing an error or warning or module name, functionality name. When it is important to uh, to consider the date and name, uh, date and time, uh, and important to uh, either you follow these inter international uh, format and uh, you know also NTP, the network uh, time protocol. To implement so that um, it is it is important to synchronize on the time ensure that you have the right source of the uh, event data which is critical um, but making sure that those event source contain the right data um, is just as important uh, event log should contain as much relevant information as possible to allow the cloud security professional to effectively audit and um, uh, conduct the forensic activities when necessary. Then we have um, logging. Um, in, the, in the logging, um, we, uh, we have collection, verification, storage and analysis and um, and of course, uh, the chain of custody and non-repudiation. Um, this is basically for uh, you know, well, when you know when you are collecting the information, you sh you should uh, ensure to validate uh, the format, uh, sanitize that information when you are collecting that, and also synchronize the time. It is very important because you may receive uh, the logs from from uh, many systems, and you need to correlate them. 
So it is important to synchronize the time. Verification, verify the events which are classified, uh, logging enabled during the test, access control, and logs, uh, log injection. So log injection is something that um, that you need to verify during the um, during the storage and collection that um, there is no duplicate log or it is not injected or it is not a malicious uh, logging just to uh, just to fill up the log uh, database or to rotate uh, very quickly so that um, it is it is an another kind of attack on the on the logs log injection um, storage and analysis um, it is important uh, for siem security and information event management um, you know the software or the uh, you know product or service that collects aggregates and indexes logs from the multiple sources and make those logs easily searched and analyzed um, for for the storage and analysis purpose uh, data aggregation uh, correlation alerting dashboard compliances retention forensic analysis these are the uh, primary use cases of the storage and the analysis chain of custody um, there are two aspects here one is the chain of custody and another is the non repudiation both are very important for uh, for the litigation or for the legal aspect uh, the chain of custody refers to the process of uh, maintaining and documenting the chronological sequence of the uh, position and the control of the physical or electronic device from the creation until it's in in the final use um, often uh, you know the presentation in the court um, the, while the non-repudiation, this is the ability to ensure that the origin of uh, origin or the author of the data cannot be uh, disputed. Um, non-repudiation is typically achieved through uh, through the different uh, security controls. Uh, for example, uh, you hash the data and uh, you sign it using the um, RSA keys or asymmetric algorithms and this helps to provide the confidence over the data's authenticity so basically to uh, to provide the authenticity the non repetition uh, comes comes into the picture so because uh, the private key is only held or owned by the signer of that information and that is why the non repetition is achieved uh, by, uh, by signing that particular information with this tutorial, we conclude uh, CCSP Domain 2. Thanks for paying attention. I hope you like the content in this video. Please tell me in the comment section. Your colleagues may also need this, so just share the link with them as well. Also, please subscribe to the channel for the regular updates. Thanks for watching.